everybody, welcome back to the channel. So one of the tests we're gonna do today is we're gonna test a six cup with gas lens and a six cup standard lens. So in this test here, we have a one eighth inch gap between the tip of the tungsten and the plate we're gonna be testing on. And what we're looking for in this video is differences between the standard six cup and a gas lens six cup to see if there are differences in the way it burns in. Um, we're not using any filler wire here, but we wanna see if like the etching line's different We'll do uh, just a 10 second burn, something pretty quick here. Um, because we're running a six cup, we'll go ahead and do 12 CFH argon. Uh, we'll do four seconds of post flow. Just um, one of the other tests we did, the tungsten had a blue tip to it, but then I've also done other tests where the tungsten didn't turn any color. So personally, I think with aluminum post flow, it's really gonna be up to you. Um, it's really gonna be up to you how dirty your aluminum is. But you know, I've used three seconds, four seconds, 10 seconds. You know, I'd much rather just resharpen Personally, that's me. I've never seen tungsten split. I know some of you try to use the, you know, the one second per 10 amps theory, but if you think about it, I mean, let's just say we were welding 200 amps, right? Some cast aluminum or something. Are you really gonna run 20 seconds? Is that right? Did I do the math right? You're really gonna run 20 seconds of post flow? I mean, that's a lot of gas. So, you know, I think it's gonna be situation specific. You hear me use that term a lot. Um, and I think it's just gonna be personal preference. You know, if if it's your only piece of tungsten and you can't afford for it to split or you don't have uh, you know, methods to resharpen it, then okay, you know, run 20 seconds. But for me, five, four or five seconds of post flow on aluminum is fine. Now stainless, different story, depends on what I'm looking for. You know, color list, do I want some color in there? You know, again, situation is gonna depend on that. So uh, in today's test, we're gonna do a 10 second burn um, at 100 amps with 2% lanthanated. And we're also, and this is the gas cup, and then we're gonna do a 10 second burn, 100 amps with same tungsten with a six standard cup. Um, we're gonna run 75% balance on this Miller machine here. And we have the uh, WP225 water cool torch. So let's check it out. And before we turn everything on, pause for dramatic effect. Here we go. So we have our torch set up, uh, it is in place. The next thing we're gonna do is put a 1 8 inch thick plate uh, for our spacing to make sure that the tests are both the same. Go ahead and we've already sharpened the tungsten here. Just drop that in and make sure, there we go. Go ahead and put our back cap on. So we got that screwed in, it's tight. Tip of the tungsten is right at the edge of the plate there. Let's go ahead and remove the plate. So here we have a stick out that's um, maybe a little bit more than an eighth of an inch, but the spacing between the tungsten and the aluminum plate we're gonna test on uh, is exactly one eighth of an inch. All right, so let's take a look at this uh, before we take the torch off and get a better visual. You can see that the cleaning action and the etching line, that white haze you see right there, uh, it's a little bit wider than the actual diameter of the cup opening. Um, you know, some of that's gonna be because of how high the cup is off the plate, but remember, there's one eighth inch spacing between the tip of the tungsten and the plate, and I, thought I witnessed a little bit of burn back on the tungsten, but let's check it out. So I'm gonna grab my plate here that I used to space, and if there's a gap between the tungsten and the plate, then I know that it burnt back a little. So, try a better angle from here. So you can see it burnt back just a little bit. I just had the tip 
uh, just blunt it off just just a tad bit. I don't like it completely shaven down flat, but a um, little bit of burn back there. It was only 10 seconds, 100 amps, so this is what I expect to see. But let's go ahead and try the standard six cup. Hey, if you're wondering what I'm using to sharpen the tungsten, uh, I finally upgraded and got a uh, tungsten mate here. It's a tungsten mate Gen 4, I believe, little diamond cutting wheel. This thing's phenomenal. I was using a, a grinder, but after using this, sharpens the same time every time. And that's important, is consistency. So for the six cup, I'm gonna go ahead and crack this thing open. Got a bunch of options here for Miller. This is the AK-150 MFC uh, flex kit. All right, so in order to use a six cup, I'm gonna have to adapt this over to a smaller head. So here we got number six, 332nd tungsten, which is good. Um, Let's go ahead and get this on there. Yeah, this kit's pretty badass. It comes with a flex head, a bunch of attachments uh, to put a smaller head, uh, 17 on there, or a 9, and all of these options here. I don't really use 1 16 tungsten, but if I do, and I can't wait, I get to use some of these um, some of these smaller ones, like a number 4 and a number 5. I did try number 5 with a 332nd uh, tungsten, and call it. Actually worked out pretty good, but I'd like to do 116s because it was taking up a lot of space at the end of that cup. So we have the standard six cup all set up. Uh, I just wanted to show you here that the spacing is exactly the same with that plate in place. It's one eighth of an inch. All right, so carefully remove that. And as you can see, it's about an eighth of an inch space there. Well, it is an eighth of an inch. Uh, and also got same stick out measurement, which is also eighth of an inch out of the cup. So. Same cup opening, the difference is not a gas lens. All right, so let's let this one rip. And we're gonna go ahead and do a burn in right next to the other one. Also, this plate has cooled down. So same temperature as we were starting with before. So just keep the test realistic. Oh, before I start this next video, I just wanna show you here. This is the uh, Tifaway automatic dimming lens. Uh, it's made for a helmet. However, I'm using this so I can film my welding. All right, 10 second burn is complete and I can already see a little difference here. But let's take this torch out of the way and have a look. All right, so let's take a closer look at these, these two burns here. So it's only 10 seconds, um, nothing crazy. So on the right, this guy, we have the number six with gas lens, right? Pretty, uh, pretty sharp defined um, etching there and if we look at this one this is the non-gas lens um, not as sharp actually looks like it burned a little dirty in it it's had the same prep on this metal here uh, equally as clean but just slightly different results now granted this is just a flat piece you know depending on what joint you're in um, may actually kind of surface you know the differences between the two the big differences um, but just kind of looking at this you know very sharp defined etching line versus this one which i mean it's sharp and defined but you can tell it's not as clean as the gas lens so do i think these are major differences between the two you know what not really i've i've welded with them both i would say like on the smaller joints if i needed to get that little six cup in there you know that's that's what i would do as a standard non-gas lens but um, here are the two differences right there. So let me know your thoughts in the comments of what your thoughts are, which one you like better. Granted, you got a little bit more, uh, a little bit more grime in that one right there, but obvious differences in the cleaning action. Oh, with the gas. And last thing I wanted to show here, cause I shared this to a group and you know, I was getting kind of called out on the color of the tungsten. So looking at the tungsten here, it's 2% lanthanated. Yeah, it started to kind of create those little nodules on there. But I think if you're actually, you know, welding like an actual long bead with filler and all that, um, I think this thing would ball up just a, just a tad bit. Um, I personally like just the tip bald, <laughs> just the tip. Um, I don't like the green ball, like the ball you see on pure tungsten, you know, it has its place. Um, but on this machine, 2% lanthanide is my favorite, but yeah, just if you look at the edge there, um, focus in on here, I don't, I don't see any blue whatsoever. It's the same color as I started with. So, uh, that was four seconds of post flow. So, you know, looking at the tungsten, like I said, just be careful who you listen to, just, you know, take it for, you know, take it with a grain of salt, just 
test it yourself. Um, and that's the one thing that, you know, I personally like, I like doing is I hear it, right? I watch a lot of YouTube videos. Um, I'm self-taught, didn't go to welding school, but surrounded myself with a lot of people that know, you know, welding. But I've just, I said, got it. I know what the, you know, the standard guideline is, but I like to kind of just test and see what I can get away with. So I've tried it with one second. I've tried it with 10 seconds. You know, I've tried different levels of, of gas. So on a six cup, you're supposed to double the cup size, right? And that's how you find your gas setting. But um, when I was doing a test with a six cup before, um, and that's something I can make another video of, but I started at 20 CFH, um, went down in five, five increments, um, or five CFH increments. So I went down to 15, then 10. Then I started to go small, then I went eight, six. And then once I got down to like five, then it just splattered, wasn't enough coverage, you know, four to five CFH. So it's just one of those things where, you know what, use just enough gas to complete your job. So what a lot of people don't understand is, yeah, that's the general rule of thumb. But if you're welding where um, you're in the elements, a lot of wind, you know, that's, that's the whole purpose of argon, right? Is gas coverage to protect the arc, not gas coverage to make your welds look pretty, you know, to a certain extent. Again, it's a, it's a fine balancing act of, you know, weld quality versus the you know, situation that you're welding in, you know, how much argon you have, you know, what are you, what are you going to run to complete the job? It's just, there's just a lot that goes into it. So don't get too wrapped up in what somebody else told you you should run. Figure out what works for yourself. Thanks for watching this video. Um, really hope you enjoyed it. I know it was short. It's Take Bit Tuesday. I should probably make that a thing. Take Bit Tuesdays. I like it. So, and then it's Taco Tuesday. So I'm about to go crush some tacos real quick, drink a couple beers. Um, but you guys have a good one out there and uh, keep practicing, keep welding. And hey, if you learned something new, uh, something that you know you want me to cover or something you want to share, definitely leave in the comments below and give me some video ideas. All right, take care.